We cannot bury our heads in the sand. We cannot pretend that this isn't real, that it doesn't exist. It does. It's a part of all of us. There are going to be so many more answers in the future and so much more that we still have to learn. Are aliens living all around us? Have they been here the whole time? Folks, it's not a conspiracy theory. These aren't just conspiracy theorists anymore or anonymous people online or people who say, you know, they worked for Area 51 and they got to come out of the closet and give you a little bit of the secret here and there. These are professors and scientists at top universities. It's the Pentagon. It's Pentagon leadership. There are people within our government, uh, lawmakers, senators who are saying the same thing. And we are living on the cusp of profound technological change as well. So this is not just about whether or not you think you're the supreme being in the universe and all of this other stuff is just, you know, BS. We are living in actual historical times. There will be a shift on planet Earth unlike no other in the history of mankind, both technologically and with our concepts of what it means to be human, our spirituality, and where our place is in this vast, amazing universe. So vast. I want you to think about it. That in the Milky Way galaxy alone, a hundred billion to four billion planets is what we guesstimate is in the Milky Way galaxy alone. That is pretty significant. When you think about our solar system and the fact that our solar system is made up of a massive star and eight planets with all of these other little bodies like, you know, asteroids and dwarf planets and comets and, you know, all that amazing stuff that we see when we go out there with our telescopes. And by the way, I love, I love space. I love the study of space. But this is something that I think for the first time in mankind, and the reason why I keep coming to it is that it expands our idea of who we are as humans. It gives me more and more faith in God than you can ever imagine. And it gets me excited about what the future holds and what I may, what you may be seeing one day very soon. And I believe our government knows more than it is saying, and it is slowly slowly making us comfortable with the idea. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about a professor right now from Stanford who at the SALT conference admitted that he believes there are aliens actually living among us. You do not want to miss this episode. Not at all. Not if you're interested in the future and the future of our planet and the future of mankind. Uh, guys, Allegiance Gold is a sponsor of this podcast. I am so grateful to Allegiance Gold. And what do I say to you always? It's about diversifying your money. Diversifying your funds is so important, especially in this day and age, when we watch what governments are doing, right? Taking and seizing more control over the people. We saw that in Canada when the truckers protested, which they rightfully did so, and now history will judge them that way. They were in the right to oppose, you know, what the government was mandating on them when it came to COVID. Um, but it didn't matter because the Canadian government, along with the banking systems, allowed people's banks to be seized, right? And we saw it in America with, and we continue to see it with all of these crazy woke agendas in corporations, you know, and banking systems. And we saw what happened with some of our banks when they folded some of the smaller banks just recently. So this is not just me talking, right? This is me telling you to do your own research. 
But Allegiance Gold is a sponsor of the show and it has amazing ratings, amazing ratings. And right now you can get $5,000 of free silver on a qualifying purchase when you tell them that Sarah sent you. That's $5,000 of free silver on a qualifying purchase when you tell them that Sarah sent you. Um, my friends at Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA, your 401k uh, with physical gold and silver that they can deliver securely right to your front door. You just can't beat that. Get $5,000 of free silver on a qualifying purchase when you tell them that Sarah sent you. Remember, they are five stars with trust link. They're triple A rated with the Business Consumer Alliance, and they have an A plus from the Better Business Bureau. Just tell them Sarah sent you. Don't wait. Call or click today, 877-702-7272. That's 877-702-SARAH, S-A-R-A, or go to protectwithsarah.com. We can't control the Biden administration, folks, but we can prepare. That is 877-702-7272. That's 877-702-SARAH or protect with Sarah. Dot com. So I'm getting over a little bit of a flu, um, a lot of a flu. Uh, this past week, I was struggling with um, influenza and uh, I went and got tested on Tuesday. They said, well, come to the clinic and we're going to give you and your husband a test. Uh, and we went down, got tested and sure enough, did not have COVID. And I was like, COVID didn't even feel this bad. It was horrible. I had the shakes. I had fever. I was coughing. It was just terrible. Um, and it progressively got worse. And then finally, when they did the testing, uh, they got they gave me some Tamiflu and I feel so much better. Thank God for modern medicine. Thank God for the current time that I live in. I always do. I thank God for that. And I say that in all seriousness, because I do have a deep faith in God. I have always felt a connection with something greater than myself. Um, I have a deep faith in Jesus Christ. Um, for me, that does not conflict. I know it does for some people with my belief that there is something more out there. And I want to hear from you because I know a lot of people don't really necessarily buy this yet. You know, this idea that there may be an intelligent life form much greater advanced than our society right now somewhere in the universe. That actually gives me more faith because I look at our universe, the vastness of what is here. And I think to myself, you know, we, we, we can't comprehend this. Even our universe is so vast. And like I said, the Milky Way between 100 and 400 billion planets in our Milky Way alone, the vastness of our place in this great mystery, right? Our place, our small little place, like a trickle of sand, right? In an ocean, on a beach, on an ocean, right? That's what I think of. And I remember the book Contact by Carl Sagan. I don't know if you've all read it. Um, I know some people are not Carl Sagan fans. I loved the book Contact. I thought the movie was great uh, with Jodie Foster, uh, but I love the book even more. Um, but the idea for me, and even if he didn't believe in it, you know, or he didn't have proof of it yet, but the idea for me it, that came out of that book that made sense to me, even as a kid, and I remember sleeping in Saudi Arabia, looking underneath the stars, looking up at the sky, you know, when I was a kid, sleeping underneath those beautiful stars in the desert, you could see so many. I mean, it's so sad now. We live in so many of us in cities with so much light that we don't see the stars the way people saw them in our past. I mean, just this beautiful vastness of brilliant diamonds in the sky, you know, just shining down on us, this amazing universe that calls to us. You know, I think it's called to us since the dawn of man. That's why we learned to fly planes. That's why we build rockets. That's why we went to the moon. We are being called out to be a part of this greatness that we have Elon Musk now preparing, you know, to do what he has always promised to do, which was send people to Mars, maybe colonize Mars. Um, and that humanity will go on, that there will be a continuation of humanity. But what if someone is actually watching us or something, something outside of earth, 
an intelligence much more advanced than ours, of course it would have to be, right? Sending what the Pentagon right now is put out in papers as just a hypothesis, uh, these idea of dandelion seeds, right? An alien mothership or lurking somewhere in our universe, you know, in our solar system watching us because we are actually catching data on probes that we believe cannot belong to any government on planet earth because they are so advanced. And by the way, the same exact kind of TikTok or dandelion seed probes that they believe are probes, we're not even quite sure what they are, have been witnessed in CIA documents going back to the 1940s. Even before that, even in ancient writings, there have been uh, either writings or drawings alluding to something that is in the skies above our planet. And some of these now that have been actually declassified in uh, Pentagon reports or talked about like the USS Nimitz have transgressed not only sky, but they go into water. So they're moving, they're terrestrial. They move through the sky, they move through the water, they go 700 to 900 Gs. A human being can only handle with about 10 Gs at the max. Uh, we don't have anything that moves that fast. Um, and so we're tracking them on our satellites. Uh, this was very interesting to me. Um, and I'll go right into um, Stanford professor Gary Nolan in a minute. But I wanted to remind you all about, you know, the story about the alien motherships lurking in our solar system. And that, you know, this report that was issued by the Pentagon coincides with what Stanford professor um, Gary Nolan is also talking about. Now, this is um, Avi Loeb. He's an astronomer at Harvard University and Sean M. Kirkpatrick. He's the director of the Pentagon's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, which was the formerly the ATIP office, which Lou Elizondo worked at. It was established in July 2022 by the Department of Defense to detect the study of objects of interest. They had released a document called the Physical Constraints on Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. That was in Mar March 7th of this year. It was not an official Pentagon document, but was carried in partnership with the DOD and it was peer reviewed. Um, Loeb talked about his research uh, about an interstellar visitor from beyond the solar system. Astronomers first detected a cigar shaped object in 2017 and originally thought it was a comet. However, its elongated shape, its lack of coma, the cloud of gases that envelop a comet, and the fact that it was accelerating away from the sun raised questions about the comet theory. Loeb suggested instead it could be an alien spaceship. Six months before um, it, its close approach to Earth, a small interstellar meteor measuring around three feet wide smashed into Earth. This meteor, they called it IM2, was not related to this uh, probe, but it got it got the scientist Loeb, Avi Loeb, thinking um, that the coincidence inspired him to consider the possibility that an artificial interstellar object could potentially be a parent craft that is releasing smaller probes during its close passage to Earth, an operational construct not too dissimilar from NASA missions missions that are happening right now. Loeb told Live Science in an email, these dandelion seeds could be separated from the parent craft by the tidal gravitational force of the sun or by its maneuvering capability. I mean, these guys are like super geniuses, right? They're coming up with white papers. They're trying to figure out what is going on in our universe. Why are we seeing these apparent probes in the sky? What do they mean? Where are they from? And, and for us, I mean, it's really causing us to think out, you know, outside of the box because we're only thinking with what the tools that we have in front of us, right? I was trying to explain, and I did a poor job of it, I think, but, but to my producers before the show, you know, we, you know, we sometimes don't even understand ourselves, right? I, I, re I remember thinking the first time I, I know you, some of you out there are going to be like, are you crazy? Why did you take one of those, you know, 23 and me things The Chinese own everything? They probably own everything right now anyways. But it was interesting to me to see how when you look at how the miracle of how we are genetically made up, like 
that we're predisposed to waking up at a certain time, that it's not all about like these physical attributes are also our spiritual and our deep sea, you know, our, our, our desires, our thoughts, the way we decide to handle things in our life. Sometimes they are associated directly with how we are genetically made, right? And so sometimes that limits us or sometimes that doesn't. Sometimes that expands our ability to see beyond ourselves. And we live in such incredible technological times where we're not only learning so much about ourselves so quickly, so quickly, like what we're predisposed to, who we are, where we're from. Um, you know, are we predisposed to cancers? Are we more predisposed to waking up at 7.30 in the morning rather than, you know, 5.30 in the morning? What we're most interested in? Do we, people like us, are they more, in, are we more interested in reading than math? Are we better at math? Are we more inclined to be musical? That's something that you can see. Are we more inclined to hearing? music, the way it needs to be heard, while others don't. They don't have a tune they can carry or a rhythm when they dance. You know, it's just, it's not, it's it's just that your marbles are in one place and somebody else's marbles are in another, just like my husband has always said. But it's much more complicated than that. But what makes it so amazing is that we can see that now. And I'm going to get into Congressman Seth Moulton's, um, you know, talk about AI and artificial intelligence and where that is going. But first, I want to stick with Stanford professor Gary Nolan. Dr. Gary Nolan was at this uh, conference uh, in New York City. It was in Manhattan. It's called Salt Eye Connections Conference with, you know, some of the top thinkers and politicians on our planet. Um, and some of them I question too, <laughs> not all of them are the top, but you know, but, but this was so fascinating to me. Maybe I should play a clip of this first. I'm going to have Cal play a clip of this first so we could get into it because I think it's just important to hear in his own words. This is a top professor. And let me give you a little bit of his background. He's a professor of pathology at Stanford's medical school. And he was asked by the Pentagon to be a part of their, you know, um, advisory program as well on not just issues pertaining to the Department of Defense when it deals with pathology and science, but also on the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence and the possibility that we are being visited. Take a listen to this. Do you believe that extraterrestrial intelligence has visited planet Earth? I think you can go a step further. It hasn't just visited. It's been here a long time, and it's still here. Uh, and it has uh, uh, basically, um, you know, people talk about the wow signal, uh, looking for extraterrestrial intelligence. The wow signal is that people see it on an almost regular basis. That's the communication that's already here. And, and that statement seems so incredible that it, it's tough to believe, right? Like, people hear that, and Maybe a lot of people here hear that, and they don't believe it. And so I'm curious, if you had to assign a probability to that statement, that you believe extraterrestrial intelligence has visited, visited this planet, what probability would you assign? A hundred percent. And that's not just my opinion. I mean, look, um, the National Defense Appropriation Act passed last year, signed by, by Biden in uh, December. 30 pages of that is the establishment of an unidentified aerial phenomenon office, the establishment of looking into the harm that's happened to any of a number of the individuals, going back to 1945 and looking at the disinformation and misinformation that has been uh, basically articulated over the decades. 12 US senators, have signed on to a document that basically says we want the information. The establishment of an office, Arrow, in the Department of Defense, 
has 25 people working in it right now. And what's their, what's their goal? Collecting the information across all of the, uh, all of the US Department of Intelligence, sorry, Department of Defense, intelligence offices, and collation of that into a uniform format for the very first time and provision of that then to Congress, the creation of a whistleblowers program specifically that allows people from, the, from within, who I'm gonna say this, who've been working on the reverse engineering programs reverse engineering of objects, so that they can come in and break their oaths, but specifically just to talk to Congress and give that information in classified settings. And that the most recent one that happened was just last weekend, and it created quite a hornet's nest in Washington. And this is very important. Why? Because Washington and the people that know what's been going on all along which is very frustrating to me because so many people, good people that have actually seen something that have actually, you know, come out and said, what, what was it that I saw in the sky? Do you all remember in Chicago, the incident at Chicago O'Hare airport where the sky opened up and there was an object in the sky, 12 United airline employees, and a few witnesses that were outside in that early morning saw the skies part and saw a machine, a ship, something. It was metallic, it was saucer shaped, and it was literally hovering over gate C-17. And you know what? They were asked to keep their mouths shut. A reporter had gone down there and was like, Interviewing people later, they, they, there were people that said, I have to talk about it. The witnesses described this object as being completely silent. They said it was, they all had different ideas on the diameter, six to 24 feet in diameter. It was dark gray in color. I'm reading some of this. Several independent witnesses outside of the airport also saw the object. One described a disc-shaped craft hovering over the airport, stating it was obviously not the clouds which is what they tried to say later. Oh, it was kind of a weather phenomena. Why is it always a weather phenomena? Like everybody's looking at it. Don't believe your lying eyes. You know, don't believe your lying eyes. But people are seeing these, these objects. They're reporting them. A long time ago, pilots would just keep their mouths shut. Now, because of the DOD, the Department of Defense, the whistleblower, um, provisions that are in these new uh, rules that they are asking people, please report this. Please report this. Do you all remember Lou Elizondo? And he's been on the show and I just was talking to him by text. I'm, he's working on a book. That's why I haven't had him back on the show. He's doing something, something spectacular, spectacular, I'm sure. And you're all going to hear about it. Um, but remember, Lou was the director of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, ATIP, which was before this new group just started in 2022 at the Pentagon. And he was a senior counterintelligence officer for the Department of Defense. He worked in Afghanistan, the Middle East, Latin America. He's a trained special agent. He tactical missions. The guy knows what he's talking about. He worked with Chris Mellon. And Chris Mellon, yeah, the descendant of Mellon Bank, Chris Mellon served as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Defense for Intelligence during Bill Clinton and George Bush administrations. And he and Chris Mellon have been working on this disclosure program. They have been working on this disclosure program, and they've done so with so many important people that it's garnered the attention, uh, bipartisan attention, on Capitol Hill. So this is not just a thing to laugh at. This is changing everything. This is changing who we are in a way as a species because we're going to have to rethink our place in the universe and what this means. We cannot bury our heads in the sand as much as we'd like to. And maybe, just maybe, 
this will wake us up. Just maybe this will wake us up. Maybe for once we can find, I don't know if we can, right now, right now, not with China and everything else that's going on. You know, maybe just like Lou Elizondo has said on past episodes, like Nick Pope has said on past episodes, you know, the interest, and by the way, the Dep- Department of Defense has, has actually laid this out there. They, these, these craft, whatever they are, these intelligence, whatever it is that we're seeing on this planet, remember, they have said that they have been very interested in our nuclear sites. One thing is for certain, the Department of Defense, our CIA, has documented these probes, these objects, not only near our military, like the USS Nimitz and all of these other, you know, naval ships, we've seen them go in and out of the water, by the way, they, they, they're, they appear to be under our water and we've tracked them there as well. I'm not making that up. You can read it. Go, go even to CNN, even if you don't want to believe, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's been, they've, they've actually written about this because the documentation is there, but maybe Maybe they are concerned about what, how we're handling ourselves. Maybe they're, maybe they use nuclear energy for, to, for their, for their energy to move. I don't know. Maybe they use the sun. Maybe they use something in our water, whatever it is though, they've been around our nuclear facilities to the point where in Montana, in Montana, they shut down the nuclear site for a period of time that was actually documented, shut down one of our nuclear react, uh, our ICBMs where we were holding our ICBMs, the computer systems went down when visually they saw something in the skies. And then in Russia, the Russians documented that when they actually witnessed one of these so-called probes or whatever it was in the skies, that their machines actually came on. So obviously, they're much more technologically advanced than we, than we had imagined if they have that kind of capa- capability to interfere. And that's pretty frightening too. I guess that would be a national security issue for us. But so far, everything seems okay right? I mean, there hasn't been like direct interference, but you got to be asking yourself this. Why is our government so intent right now to open up all these doors and say, yeah, we believe it. There's something out there and it's happening right now. And if any of you see anything, please report it. You have to ask yourself that question. I think disclosure is imminent. I think it's going to happen. And I do believe we're living in miraculous, un, uh, unexplainable, maybe in some ways, times. And I think things for us as humans are going to change drastically. And that's where, before I close out, I want to talk to you a little bit when I get back um, about uh, Congressman Seth Moulton and uh, his concern about artificial intelligence and what that means for the future of humanity And I'm telling you, it might play a role in all of what we're seeing in our skies as well. I really do believe that. But first, I want to tell you about somebody who is not an alien. No, um, although some on the left might say that, but that's Mike Lindell. (laughs) And he's awesome. And he's a true American. And he does believe in our country and American products and what that means Uh, to you and I. And when you buy American folks, you are supporting American companies and American people. And I think there's nothing better than that. And you know me, I love two things, talking about aliens and getting a great night's sleep on MyPillow 2.0. Yes, MyPillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free on MyPillow 2.0 right now when you head over and you use the promo code CARTER. You got to go online, folks. You got to go online to MyPillow.com. Use the promo code Carter for MyPillow 2.0. You'll get the brand new temperature regulating technology that will keep you comfortable throughout the night, even if the aliens try to come and get you. And I'm telling you, you want to take that pillow with you. 
to whatever planet you're going on. It's just that good. And for a limited time, when you buy one, my pillow 2.0, you get the other one free with the promo code Carter. You also have a choice of so many other things on there. You got so much going for you. Dog beds, sheets, my slippers. Jack Posobiec isn't the only person wearing those slippers. No, everybody in my house is wearing those slippers. You can get your slippers too. Go to MyPillow.com for MyPillow 2.0, buy one, get one pricing, plus discounts on all your favorite MyPillow products like towels, sheets, slippers, and more by using the code Carter. Stay cool and sleep better with the MyPillow 2.0, buy one, get one free sale going on now at MyPillow.com, promo code Carter, MyPillow.com, promo code Carter. Hey, if you want the latest on the alien question and more out of this world interviews, then you've got to follow me for all of this content. Go ahead, go to sarahacarter.com, download the podcast on YouTube, on Rumble. It really does make a difference. Thank you. So this leaves us with the biggest question. Why are we being visited? Why are they coming? Have they always been here? We just couldn't see them. We didn't have the right technology. Sure, every once in a while, right? Something would happen. Somebody would see something. Somebody would report it, and then the government would call them nuts. I think all those people are vindicated now, for the most part. Not every one of them, but I think there are people that are being vindicated. And then I wonder to myself, like, so maybe just like Professor Gary Nolan said, Maybe they've been here all along. And now we're just seeing the evidence of that, right? But they seem to be more interactive with us now. And is that because of where we are technologically? Is that because like, you know, we're seeing with the advancements in artificial intelligence that are like beyond anything we could have ever thought of? Like, I feel like I just woke up last week and all of a sudden I've got robots talking to me and possibly, you know, becoming self-aware. Like, when did when the heck did that happen? I thought that was just on the Twilight Zone and a couple of other shows like Black Mirror. All of a sudden, it's real. All of a sudden, ChatGPT is doing incredible things. Google Intelligence. And Google AI is doing incredible things. So we are on the cusp of these amazing new times. I don't think we should fear it. I think we should be very cautious on how we as human beings are going to handle it. And how we are going, and unfortunately, we haven't had the greatest history on handling things the right way. Not always. Not always. And right now, you know, there's this interesting article. I'm looking at it right now. It's AI versus nukes. This is much more dangerous. It's in Politico. If you guys want to read it, I think it's a great uh, read and it's an important story. And here, Congressman Seth Moulton believes that killer robots could be here today and not that much further ahead in the future. They could replace actual soldiers on the battlefield, uh, which is so weird because I'm going to tell you this you have to have skin in the game, right? It's like being in a fight, right? Everybody thinks, oh, well, if you have robots fight it, like, what, what does that mean in the end, you know? It's, it's a different way of thinking. It's a different mindset of humanity. And I would say this too, a lot of times with drone strikes, we didn't have like, for example, you know, when it comes to drone strikes, when you have like people at like a Creech air base, right? Flying drones overhead and then shooting a drone, you know, at a terrorist base, instead of it being an actual pilot, you know, there is that mindset, a human being has the capability to make decisions that are more compassionate, maybe sometimes could be vicious, but we're different when we're involved in the decision-making. When it's artificial intelligence, that, that process is very different, right? Very different. 
So we need to have morals and boundaries and ethics established before we jump the gun, so to speak, into the creation. We're not going to stop it. I'll tell you that right now. We're not going to stop these advancements. As many of us as are afraid of it, we wish it would stop. We say, this isn't godly. This isn't this. This isn't that. It does not matter right now. It will not stop. Progress will not be stopped unless we ourselves are stopped. That's the only way. Unless we end, that will not end. Our destiny historically from the beginning of time is open to advancements. And advancements are okay as long as we have our morals and our values in place. As long as human beings can agree on the fundamentals of those values and principles, those human rights that need to be established. I don't know if we're going to do that. Could that be the reason why we're seeing what we're seeing? Are we seeing more of it because we are more advanced? And that's why we're picking up on these probes and, you know, they're on our radar and they're the you know we're in, we're our military has been documenting these much more now than ever in the past. Are we seeing them more because, wow, we are changing so fast that we are living in times that I don't even think we ourselves quite understand the science behind what we are dealing with, and even who we are. Because this didn't come from nowhere. It's not like just artificial intelligence just rolled up on us and like said, hey, we're AI, we're here on planet Earth. You want to help us along? We were the creators of that. That came from us. We gave birth to AI. We gave birth to nuclear weapons. We created the atom bomb. We created the code breaker. We have, we created amazing new tools and plastics and things that are now saving people's lives from cancer and genetics that are going to revolutionize the way we treat cancer, right? CRISPR and genetic codes and mRNA and all those scary things that we're all so scared of sometimes are going to change humanity. We will not be able to stop it. But what we do need to do is we need to think through what we are doing. We need to understand that we're also spiritual beings with rules and morals and hopefully an internal compass, right? To guide us in the right direction. For me, that's God. That's my faith in Christ. I think it's pretty awesome that I live in these times. And I'm going to read you just a bit out of this story, which I think was really well done. Um, And it gets you thinking, right? This is about Congressman Moulton. Um, It's worth noting that the DOD recently updated its autonomous weapons directive to follow the department's AI ethical principles policy. I think that's interesting. We'll go into that probably in a future uh, podcast on AI, where I hope to bring in some top experts and guests on that. And military officials have repeatedly said there will always be a human in the loop when it comes to autonomous weapons killing people. Interesting. But Moulton thinks that's not enough. For starters, the Defense Department needs to lead by example and set ethical rules to protect to prevent an automated or unintended atrocity on future battlefields and capitalize on the military's huge data reserves to advance artificial intelligence, he said. We spoke with the lawmaker about his fears and hopes for the future, and they go into a Q&A with him. And he says something right here, and then we're going to go back to, you know, Professor Gary Nolan, and then we're going to wrap this up, but I want you to think about it. I don't think they've done much of anything. That's what he says about the Department of Defense. 
I talked to two service chiefs in the past week who both said the Pentagon is way behind on this. So our technology is moving faster than we can even imagine, right? With humans who have advanced this, because it didn't come out of nowhere. This is about human beings creating things and advancing things, which I believe were made in the image of God. God is our creator. You know, he's given us two hands. He's given us brains, some people more than others. And, you know, we've got to take a big responsibility for what we are creating. So we are creating this. And he's saying, look, you know, the DOD, they haven't, the people in charge aren't thinking this through. They've got no direction whatsoever, no guidance. The Pentagon is a $760 billion enterprise. And right now we're spending half as much as China is on AI as a percentage of our defense plan. That is insane. And it may be a reason why we're seeing what we are seeing. And I said I would bring it back to the Stanford professor. And he's a prominent UFOologist. But I'm bringing it back to him because he actually believes and he's brought up this idea that these may be autonomous, that these probes that are coming may be connected. They may be autonomous. They may be AI in nature, collecting data, thinking on their own in some way, collecting it, taking it back to wherever that is in this massive universe among universes. You know, so we don't know, but what we do know is that there is something out there. What that means to us as human beings, what that means to our future, I think a lot of that is going to be dependent on us and how we handle it and what we do with the technology that we are developing and where we are headed in the future. We cannot bury our heads in the sand. We cannot pretend that this isn't real, that it doesn't exist. It does. It's a part of all of us. There are going to be so many more answers in the future and so much more that we still have to learn. And you know what? I'm pretty excited about it. Sure, I'm a little nervous, but I'm pretty excited about the fact that we are living in such miraculous times. Follow me on Truth at Sarah Carter Official on Twitter at Sarah Carter DC and on Instagram at S Carter DC, where I'm still not verified. And I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. But if I was an alien, I'd be verified already. Thanks, Facebook. God bless you. God bless our great nation. God bless all those aliens out there. And please, God. Don't let them do anything to harm us. And God bless the great state of Texas. 